Hey, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, quite an eclectic view of knives here. Um, but as you look at these knives, they're all kind of different, but they have one thing in common, and that's what we're going to be talking about. So um, they're really strange, different, unusual. I don't know how you'd like to classify that, but uh, weird, right? So this is an open tag. I'd like you guys to show me your weird, unusual knives and um all these knives we're going to go over tell you about why they're weird or unusual to me and uh i hope that you show me yours so if you'd like to see more and hear more about these knives go ahead and check out the video <laughs> you sent me a smoochy picture mm -hmm. <laughs> right. why are you laughing at me so funny looking. Hey, welcome back to the Fortified Castle. We're going to be talking about really cool stuff. It's going to be interesting looking at these knives and talking about them. Uh, I hope you'll show me yours. It's an open tag for weird, unusual, out there kind of knives. And um, so I'm missing one from here. As a matter of fact, I'm missing a couple of them. There's one right there. And here's one right there. I think that's all I got. Anyhow, uh, I want to say hi to all my viewers. I uh, really appreciate you all. Um, got a giveaway coming up on the 20th. On the 23rd, I'm going to have a uh, live show and a very special guest. Stephen from Patty's Potato Peeler is going to be on. We're going to be cutting it up and we're going to be talking about vintage knives only. And um, if you have a question, uh, you know, go ahead and send to my Gmail a picture uh, of a knife you have a question about. We'll try to answer it. I can't promise that, but um, between us, we've got some experience there. We should be able to answer your questions. Uh, if you can't get that done, can't send a picture just on the live show, you know, we're going to be following the, um, the uh, comments close. So uh, just ask it in the comments, and then we'll uh, try to talk about it. Without a picture, you, you know, you're kind of shooting in the dark uh, about what somebody's talking about. So if you can, you know, send a picture with a question to my Gmail, which is rasputin at gmail.com, and it's in my uh, description page. So um, let's see. So that live show is going to be the 23rd which is Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 o'clock for you guys in the uh, UK, 9 p.m. All right, uh, so let's get into these interesting knives. All right, so the first one is a crambit. So a crambit is a knife that has a short, curved, um, acutely curved blade on it, Kind of like a uh, tiger's claw. And that's really the idea of the knife. It has a hole in the end. You're supposed to put your hand in there like that. And hold the knife like this. And and uh, so what would that be good for? Well, you know, you could probably use this to cut a canvas. You know, if you're a sail maker. Something like that. But basically, this was a uh, tactical design that became popular, you know, I don't know, 15 years ago. And uh, guys just love these things. Uh, they like to think that they're Bruce Lee. And um, I don't know if there's any historical uh, precedence for this knife. Um, I think, you know, obviously it, it's a martial arts knife. And uh, I'm not really sure the country of origin of this design. I'm thinking maybe the Philippines. But I don't know. And... Um, yeah, I think it's the Philippines. Anyhow, if you know, just uh, shout that out in the comments. And I just think that's weird. It's unusual. You just, very unusual knife design. Uh, so here's another one. This is a boker. And it's an unusual uh, knife de design. It's a flipper. It looks unusual. And looks really cool. Just a little unusual. You know, the blades are not so unusual, but that whole design... You know, look at how the flippers kind of form a design there. The whole thing is just kind of wild. 
Uh, sometimes I just do things because they're fun to do. And that's why I bought this knife. It's kind of crazy. All right. Um, this is a knife. So um, you might not think of it as a knife, but it is a knife. And so this is a uh, tree scribe. Uh, this is an old one dating to the 1920s. The only part that's sharp on the blade is this edge right here. Carpenters, shipwrights, and uh, loggers use these type of knives to make marks in the um, in the wood. And so it's kind of weird, isn't it? But it is a knife because it has a cutting edge. They're called tree scribes. Kind of unusual. Uh, this knife is just hilarious. It's a little tiny knife, okay? Here's a fruit knife and little, little tiny knife. Um, this kind of uh, end of days plastic design on this. And um, it is plastic, just a thin layer of plastic. So there's um, tiny little liners on this too. But it has a tiny little blade on it. And it it locks barely. And then you have these tabs. And this tab is a snuff spoon. And this tab is a pick. And so it's kind of like a smoker's knife. But I just think it's really, um, besides being so small, I think these tabs at the end are just really unusual. That's a, what's up with that knife. So this is a gravity knife. Um, you flip it up like that. And then you flip it open. And it's not going to close on you. So you're holding it like this. And it keeps it from closing. But I just always thought this was a really different design. You know, in a knife. Very simple. Works. It's, it, it's very solid knife. Once you lock this in here. It's not going anywhere. Uh, really solid design on it. And then uh, it goes like this. Pop back in. Like that. And anyhow, the des whole design of this knife is just unusual, I think. Alright, this one is a uh, flim knife. And again, uh, these are really common. They're not rare. This one uh, dates probably to the Civil War. Three different blades on it. It was made by George uh, Wolstenholme. Um, and you use these knives for a couple things. So uh, primarily these were used to bleed uh, animals. So uh, if they haven't had a, um, a uh, blister or something like a horse, um, that could be really painful. And they used to um, take this put it on there and tap it with a, a, a wooden rod and um, cause it to uh, bleed. And so, you know, it actually has a really um, uh, a good function when you're talking about animals, but they also use these to bleed humans. So back in the day, it was thought that, you know, bleeding you, letting the blood flow out of your body, let the disease flow out of your body, and uh, now in the, nowadays we know um, that uh, that'll cause you to die, right? <laughs> so your blood pressure gets too low. Yeah, but kind of interesting. I just always thought those were really unusual knives. Uh, this knife right here is unbranded. It looks very strange. It's also very big. So that's really thick around here. Not too thick that it, you know, doesn't feel unnatural. It's just a lot thicker than normal. And you can see, you know, my hands are about four inches. You can see how big this thing is. And then that really weird blade on there. And um, this is not a cut down knife. So if you look at the distal taper on it, right there, come on. If you look at the distal taper on it, this edge is a uh, scraping edge and it was designed that way and put on the knife and um, 
I think this is a painter's knife. I think this is used for scraping putty uh, out of windows. And you just don't see a lot of these uh, knives. So basically it's a putty knife. Knife. It has a very sharp edge here. So you can use the edge. Uh, it's very thin blade. It's thick here, but it goes down to nothing really quick. And this thing is really sharp. And uh, I just thought that was really, really interesting. Uh, you, I've seen these in catalogs. You don't see these knives around very much at all. Um, this knife right here is a cut master. And you have a chicken nutter right there for castration. And you have a skinning blade here. There's a cut master. And that's just strange on a knife, isn't it? So this is a veterinary knife. Veterinarians used to carry this. In a catalog, uh, I found this knife listed. They um, called this a gum bleeder. Gum. G-U-M. Gum bleeder. Uh, but I believe they use these to uh, castrate. I probably use them for other things, too. I don't know. Never talked to a veterinarian about it. That's on my to-do list. Talk to a veterinarian about that. So this is a fruit knife. Um, reason I think these are strange is they're practically worthless. Look at the uh, milled back on this. I doubt that's milled. It's, the, the, the age of this knife, it's probably uh, worked by a file. But, um... These are really delicate knife. Uh, some of these are all made out of silver. You can see I'm moving the blade here. And that means the blade is all silver. So you're just not going to put this under a lot of use. And um, they were carried by ladies. Uh, supposedly to cut fruit. But man, I don't know. You can't cut an apple with this thing. And just as a comparison, here's a little keychain knife from the 60s. And w when you pop this out, you see the blade right there. Cool uh, tang stamp on that. If any of you guys know what that tang stamp is, uh, who it belongs to, let me know. Because I can't, I can't figure out who made this knife. But anyhow, so this is a keychain knife. And you can see they're similar in size. But this thing... It is a lot sturdier, and I can see you cutting an apple with this. You could do it, but you really can't do it with those uh, um, fruit knives. And here's another one. Here's one right here. This is all silver. Even the back spring on this is silver. And I just, I just always thought that was kind of weird, you know, that you have those. Um, this is a weird knife here. So this is a quill knife. Dates to the early 1800s. But there's 16 blades. Let me see. Yeah, 16 blades on this knife. They're all exactly the same size. They're about an inch and a half. And, um, you know, why do you need 16 blades on a knife? And, um, yeah, I get it. It was probably a show knife. But still, it just, uh, some people did buy these. Uh, and use them, you know, but 16 blades, pretty, pretty strange, this is a really cool knife, and let's see what else we got, I'll finish up with this, so, this is a really strange looking uh, knife, and you would think that this is not a knife, that it, it's like a, a display piece, but it is a knife, and so this is called a fish knife, and this is a pretty big one, but they come in different sizes. These were popular in the uh, mid-1800s. This one doesn't date that far back. I think this is early 1900s, I believe. But, uh, pardon me. What's, um, what's interesting about that knife, and why they call them a fish knife, is people started... Somebody made a knife specifically for eating fish, and they called it a fish knife, and it caught on. And all these rich people are spending money on these knives right here 
to cut fish with. And if you've ever cut fish, you know that you don't even need a knife. Once you cook fish, it just flakes off. You can use a fork. You don't even need a knife. So this was all about uh, aristocracy and, and, and being well-to-do and showing off. And that's what people use these knives for. They'd have a party, everybody come over, and they were just showing off. Uh, showing off their crystal, showing off, look at me, I can afford this. And that's what these knives were all about. And it, it, it's really incredible. They kind of ran into the uh, 1900s, but the, by the 1880s, they were just out of uh, out of favor, kind of like fruit knives were going away. And um, but they have some really interesting designs. Look at this. So the flourishes were all blued. You can see right there. And then you can still see the brown. So this was uh, gold, genuine gold on here. On the mountains and stuff. And, uh, you know, just fancy, fancy, fancy. Look at that. So that's kind of weird and strange. A knife really you don't need, right? All right, that's all I got. Hey, show me yours. Show me your strange and unusual knives. Um, and I appreciate you guys for supporting the channel and watching. Thanks again.